this topic is measurement, okay? Or rather, this strain is called measurement. We're getting an introduction to this, even though we've been doing measurement for a long time. But just like the whole general course is trying to do, we're trying to make ground this as much as possible, be as practical as possible. So as soon as you measure things, no matter what it is that you are measuring with, right? Or no matter what it is that you're actually measuring, you encounter this problem of accuracy. In fact, in sort of brackets over the side here, I like you to write brackets accuracy because significant figures are about us wrestling with this problem of accuracy. So this number, 24 million, anyone make a guess as to why this might be a significant, important number, I should say, to us? Anyone know what it represents? Yeah. Population of Australia. It is, roughly speaking, the population of Australia. Okay. Now, it's pretty short. It would be mostly for us unrealistic to think, oh, there are exactly 24 million people, not 24 million and one, not 23 million exactly 24 million people in the country. Why would it be? I mean, everyone looks at this number and knows it's approximate. Why? Well, how do you know that? Yeah. People are always getting born and dying. And Very good. Like yeah. So, yeah, Australia is a big enough country that every day, every hour, maybe even every minute, someone is being born, someone is passing away, or even, let's be less, less morose than that, people are entering the country and people are leaving the country, right? So this number is constantly changing. That's the first thing I noticed, okay? So maybe we want to note that down. This number is constantly changing. So therefore, even if I had an exact number, and in fact, I do have an exact number, which I'm going to write down. And I know this number looks very different, but I'll explain why it is in a second. Even if we did have an exact number for the population, uh, is it that useful to us? Not so much. Like, what planning could you do with the exact, with the exact number, 24 million and whatever, 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 versus what planning you can do with the approximate number that would make a huge difference. Probably not that much when you're working on these scales. So that's the first thing, it's constantly changing. But secondly, how do we arrive at this number? For example, that second number there, it was, was an exact number for the population of Australia. How do you think people found that number? Does anyone know? Yeah, we did the census. In fact, the reason this number is smaller is because this was the 2011 census. Okay. Yeah, how, I actually don't, what we should find out, we should look up, we're going to look at some of the census data in another topic. Is it, yeah, is it every five? Is it this year? I think it's five this year. Yeah, so, so obviously, should point out, why is it that we wait, like we don't do a census all the time? Why not? Too many, it's, it's a pain. It's also incredibly expensive. Right? If any of you remember when this happened, everyone has to get a big, huge form. Everyone has to do it at exactly the same time, because otherwise this, this causes problems for us. Okay? So therefore, being that this instrument that we've got, a census, to get an exact number, is difficult to use, this is actually a 2016 estimate. Where do you think this number comes from if it's not from a census? Any guesses? Just What do you think, then? Every five years. Maybe they get an old census, census and they project how many they think. Yeah, 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 very good. So, just before we, we get onto a new point, this is, this is actually primarily the way this is done, and we'll talk a little bit about the details of how. But you look at, we've got 2011 census, we've got censuses, censuses? Sensei. Sensei. Yeah, okay. <laughs> You've got all of this data that gives you kind of like a pattern, right? So you get a trend, and we saw that in linear relationships. Sometimes you have a super consistent trend. It's clearly not going to be that consistent for something as volatile as population. But you look back, right? And what you do is you project an estimate. Now we know, because there are all these crazy little variables that we can't ever know finely detailed, we know that this is going to be close. But as a measurement instrument like this, as a measurement instrument, it's a little bit blunt. It's not that detailed. And so that's why they don't say 24 million and 300,000 and 92 or whatever it is. They just say, look, that's roughly it. That's about as accurate as we know. Okay, now, okay, were you going to suggest another point? For that? I was just going to say, uh, look at the previous 
consensuses. Yep. And just try and determine a trend and work from there. Yeah, very good. So maybe like the population's increasing, but maybe it's slowing down. Mm -hmm. So we try and map that out and be as accurate as we can. It so says it happens every five years. Oh okay. yeah, so, so, so this year. Mm -hmm. Fine, okay. So, so therefore, I'm now going to draw this parallel between an object like this and something like um, this, this kind of thing here, right? We, we've seen these all before, right? We've used these, we've used them a lot. We're going to use them a bit more in the room. Yeah, question. 9th of August. Wonderful. That's very soon, actually. So all of your households are going to get a little package, well, not a little package, a somewhat large package in the mail. Large. Now, censuses <laughs> still feels weird. Very fine detailed instrument, okay? But impractical to use. So therefore, we resort to things like this. Now, because you've used one of these before, you guys know roughly how accurate you can measure something with this, right? What's the closest like measurement that you can get on something like this? It's about one degree. It's supposed to be one degree. But of course, if you want to get more accurate than that, you can start and say, oh, maybe it's kind of half a degree, or it's, it's really, really close, maybe it's like 0.9 of a degree, something like that. The point is that in every measuring instrument you've got, inaccuracies are kind of built in. Right? So therefore, I'm going to say, look, I don't really know exactly, so I'm just going to tell you roughly. And that's what significant figures are about. Okay? So, uh, if you've got another color there, right? how many significant figures are in this number? How many important numbers? And the answer is two of them. Right? So this is to two significant figures. Yes, that's a great question. So let me let me push on this because we need to we want to think about this carefully, right? So this is two significant figures, and I'm going to just treat it as the same number, right? If I see 24 million as words, or if I see 24 and I see the numbers there, okay? Again, I think if we saw this number, we would be highly suspicious, we, and we say, really? Is it exactly that? We can't know that that's going to be the exact number, so we can only assume that there are two significant figures. Does that make sense? Okay. Now let's think about some other examples. So I'm just going to keep going down the board. We want to think through this, and then I'm going to let you guys have a go at the examples yourself. If I said to you, okay, now don't shout an answer. Just think about it first, okay? If I said to you, all right, I have a class, not this one because it's a bit smaller, say a year seven class, and I counted up and I wrote down 30 students. Just pause for a second. How many significant figures do you think that would be? Hmm. This is interesting, isn't it? Who said three? Who said three? Um, this is this is a bit of a challenge, right? Because and we should we should put this here, right? Put a box around it. Is it two significant figures? Question mark. Or is it one? You're going to get sick of writing significant figures too. Um, is it one or is it two? Now. Because I told you exactly what that data was, I told you it was 30 students, and it was 30 students in class. You guys know it's not that hard to just actually count out individuals. And in a high school, actually 30 is a very common number. Why is 30 a common number? Because that's the maximum that it's supposed to be, anyway. Okay? So therefore, 30 is going to come up a lot. Exactly 30. Okay? But if you didn't know that, if I just told you the number 30, didn't tell you what it was measuring, didn't tell you context, didn't tell you anything, all you saw was the number. Then just like at the top of the board, you see all these zeros, and you're like, well, maybe it was 29. It's like, eh, roughly 30. Maybe it was 33, and you said, eh, roughly 30. Okay. So I don't know which one of those it is if I don't have any context. Does that make sense? Okay. So in this context, I can say, yep, that's two, because I know about it. I have information that provides us two. Okay. But if all I see is a number, then I can't assume, I can't know that you actually went individually and counted. That zero is the result that happens when you round. So I have to assume that that's being rounded if I have no other information. Does that make sense? So, let me push on this a little bit further, okay? If I just told you 24 million, right? What do you think are the chances of us counting up 23,990,998? 23 million, 999,999, and it's stopping right on a dime at 24 million. What do you think are the chances? <laughs> Quite a <laughs> million. <laughs> 24 million? They're pretty low, right? They're pretty low. Whereas, what are the chances that this was some number that got rounded and therefore you ended up with zeros? Quite high. It's quite high, right? Now, because zero is the number you end up with after rounding, 
and you don't know which one it is, you have to assume with no other information that it's being rounded. Okay? So if they don't tell you, I counted up individual students and there were exactly 30 of them, then that looks to me only one of those numbers can be significant. Does that make sense? Wait, so if they pretty much most of the time, it will just assume that it's being rounded. Correct. Correct. If that's they right. give you other information, yes, then it changes. Yes, that's exactly right. That's, that's would you? Would they do that? Like now, okay. Now I'm always one second before I get to your question. So you can put your hand down. It's okay. I'll get to you. This is tricky, right? Because you guys know all the time in this subject in particular, I'm always kind of doing two things, right? I'm trying to make sure you are really good at this course. Yeah. But then I'm also trying to make sure that you are a numerate, literate citizen who can work with numbers in the real world when you're not being marked, when there's no marking guidelines, when you're just trying to read something and understand it for yourself. Okay? So at this moment, I'm kind of mostly wearing the second hat. Right? I need you to be able to look at numbers in the real world, whether they give you details or don't, and then be able to interpret. Right? When someone says to you, yeah, okay, the average income, the average um, household salary in New South Wales, for instance, is about $135,000, if you see that number. What are you going to do? Are you going to think, hmm, I think I am going to assume there are only three significant figures there, right? Or are you going to wonder, oh, no, maybe, <laughs> maybe some exam set up said, no, actually, there are six significant figures there and you don't really know. That's not what you're going to do. You're going to read the paper and you're going to think, of course they've approximated. Of course, there's how many number of households and they just want a round number. You know what? I bet, I bet that five has also been rounded. Okay? Yeah. So my point is, you're going to see real data and real data in the real world almost always, you know, you know what? I'm going to say always, whenever it's been measured, has some kind of rounding approximation that's been brought into it. So you always get significant figures. 